we are going to be talking about 25 website traffic methods exposed and these are going to be 25 proven methods to get targeted traffic to your website this is going to be a two-part series so this first session is going to cover traffic methods 1 through 10 and these are not in any particular order these are basically just an overview of 10 different proven traffic methods that you can use to get traffic to your website to build your leads to uh, drive sales whatever your goal is online make affiliate income these methods will apply for any kind of website website traffic and your business without website traffic your online business simply will not survive it's an essential part of your business you need people coming into your quote-unquote store so to speak it's just like an offline business they need foot traffic you need web traffic you need browsers on your website whether it's your blog you're trying to build leads up whatever the case is your business needs web traffic Traffic brings you the audience that takes action on your site. Again, without people on your website, no action is going to take place. No list building is going to take place. No sales will take place. No affiliate commissions will happen. Uh, you can't sell advertising space on your website if nobody's there. So you need web traffic. Targeted website traffic is the absolute best type of traffic. You're better off getting a targeted visitor, meaning somebody that's really interested in the material on your website, than you are if you just get a casual web browser that may just be targeted to, let's say, just the United States. Well, they could be interested in all kinds of stuff. Like, you would be better off getting a thousand people that are interested in model trains on your model train website than if you had 10,000 visitors that are just US browsers for example maybe they're just targeted to the country and you have 10,000 of those you're gonna get much better result from the 1,000 people that are model train enthusiasts so you don't necessarily have to have it's not about having the absolute most traffic but it's having a good amount of targeted traffic that's gonna achieve the results that you're looking for one thing with traffic that's really important is you do not want to put all your eggs in one basket and when I say that I simply mean you don't want to focus on too many website traffic methods at, or you don't want to, what you don't want to do is you don't want to focus on one in particular traffic method and so that would be like you don't want to have your only traffic source be Google pay-per-click because as many people may know at any point Google could decide to change things they could double or triple the price you're paying per click they could decide to close your account down because you don't have control over that uh, a variety of reasons uh, could be a reason here so you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket you want to focus on a variety of traffic methods which is why over this two-part course we're covering 25 traffic methods and giving you an overview of each method what it entails and what you can do to start generating traffic so you want to focus on a variety of traffic rely on traffic from multiple sources around the web that's going to help sustain you if let's say pay-per-click goes down but you have links coming from press releases maybe you have banner ads going out there you have solo ads you have a variety of different other methods like SEO or blogging and different things that are funneling traffic to you you want to be consistent with your traffic efforts that's so important remember that content is key to any traffic strategy and I will talk about that as we move forward uh, but really to get any kind of sustainable good traffic online especially nowadays in such a social world and a world where people are seeking information you need to be producing good solid content to keep your audience interested and you want to be consistent with your content creation and your traffic efforts the first part before we jump into each one of these 10 methods is to talk about tracking your website visitors and to do that this is really important because it's really good for you to know where your website visitors are coming from and Google Analytics is a great free tool to tell you this type of information they will tell you how many visitors per day you're getting to your website uh, they will narrow it down by what keywords are coming for what pages on your website are actually getting the traffic or the majority of the traffic what page people are exiting from they really give you some really good information they tell you what countries people are visiting from really everything you would expect from a paid tracking solution you actually can get with Google Analytics and so to set that up you just want to go to google.com 
forward slash analytics. If you already have like a Gmail account or a Google account for Google Plus or something like that, then you're already set up. Uh, basically, you'll just go to google.com analytics and you'll go through the steps to set up your first website with them. You could also use inside your control panel if you're using HostGator. Uh, Bluehost also has this. They have a similar type control panel. A lot of the major web hosting companies have uh, web tracking already actually built in as well. There is something called Webalyzer or AW Stats or AWStats, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But there's Webalyzer or AW Stats, and this is from your website cPanel. So you can actually find that inside your web hosting control panel and this is kind of what they look like you'll see the arrows pointing to webalyzer and aw stats you can actually click there and it will tell you similar information uh, from what google analytics tells you i actually recommend you consider using both because they're both going to tell you different kind of intel uh, webalyzer and aw stats most of the time are automatically already set up to work so if you forget to do google analytics right out of the gate you could turn to these two solutions to see what kind of traffic you're getting and i would compare the three of them actually because they will give you slightly different results but it's going to give you information that maybe the other one might be lacking so tracking your visitors is super important because that's going to tell you are the methods you're implementing working? Is the content you're producing engaging to where people are wanting to stick and stay on your website? And also, most importantly, you know what what are your traffic numbers? Are they improving? Are they going down? Do you need to do more of a certain thing? Uh, those types of things is what you're going to want to be looking for. You also want to look at keywords. These tools will tell you what keywords people are looking for when you're actually tracking your website visitors. So they will give you some really good intel to look at. So here's some proven website traffic methods. These are the 25 methods we will cover over this two-part series. The first one is search engine optimization, or SEO as some people call it, and I'll go into detail on each one of these. Facebook, absolutely huge amount of traffic is available on Facebook. Pinterest, it's a new picture uh, sharing type website for pin boards, and I'll explain that. Twitter, many people know what Twitter is. Pay-per-click ads, so like the ads you see in Google. Paid banner ads, advertisements that you would place on targeted websites. Amazon, you can actually get a lot of traffic through Amazon through a variety of different channels that they actually sell. Blogging is absolutely one of the best traffic strategies out there, and it's a good way to start any kind of well-rounded traffic plan, and we'll discuss that as well. RSS submission, so submissions of your blogs uh, RSS feed. RSS stands for real simple syndication and you can actually syndicate your blog post to many different blog directories and that will really help boost you up in the search engines. Forum marketing that is another thing and with any of these traffic methods it's all about exposure so the more these methods you can implement or that you can zero in on like I talked about you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket because if one traffic method fails like I know a lot of people that SEO is their main focus uh, that used to be where I was at they focus completely on SEO and then all of a sudden Google changes their algorithm and next thing you know they're they have next to no traffic because all they focused on was just getting the higher search engine ranking instead of focusing on having a variety of sources funneling traffic to their website so it's all about getting exposure the more places you're found online the more times people are going to see your website and potentially visit it Q&A websites we'll talk about that in part two uh, press release websites online classified sites directory submissions social bookmarking article submissions guest blogging Web 2.0 sites like Squidoo, Hub Pages, you've probably heard of those sites. Uh, old school marketing strategies. These are old school marketing strategies uh, that work in your local community for getting uh, website traffic. These are methods that have been around for ages, even before the internet. And I'll talk about how to utilize these to get people onto your website. Solo ads, that, that's a really good quality traffic source depending on the niche you're in. Uh, joint ventures, absolutely by far the best way to get website traffic. Blog commenting, that's a big one. Viral reports, so like creating viral reports. And then video marketing is another outstanding website traffic method that is really only getting bigger and bigger and more people are interested in video marketing. 
and then there's document sharing websites as well so traffic method number one is SEO or search engine optimization it's working to improve a website's position and visibility in the organic unpaid search results that is precisely what SEO stands for that is exactly what it is and probably the best example I can give the higher the rankings the more targeted traffic you will end up receiving target keywords that will send you the right kind of visitors that's really the most important part uh, so anytime you're doing SEO it's basically working on your website so it's cleaning up certain elements and I'll talk about what to fix uh, the goal here is to improve where your website is positioned if it's on page 5 of Google you're not going to get a lot of visitors so your goal is to get to page 1 and two if you can you want to improve it as much as possible your position because that's going to give you more overall exposure for targeted keywords and a single website can actually be found in the search results for hundreds of different keywords it's entirely possible which is why it's so important and you don't want to focus on just one main keyword it's it might be better off for you to get ranked for a hundred really targeted type keywords maybe don't send as much traffic but they send you a lot of targeted visitors that are really interested so the higher the rankings the more traffic you receive it's simple as that and you want to target keywords that send you the right kind of visitors so when we're talking about keywords to focus on with SEO you don't want to in particular focus on let's say weight loss that's actually a pretty broad keyword phrase but you may want to focus on something like weight loss or let's say diet uh, in the weight loss niche you could have uh, dieting and you could have inside the dieting market you could have something like the fruit salad diet or something like that you get the idea there's the Atkins diet that was a big deal um, Atkins diet tips under weight loss you could be covering fitness you could talk about all kinds of different fitness methods there's everything out there uh, from you know CrossFit to different types and styles of workouts that you could really be focusing in on if you're selling that particular information so there's a lot of different uh, keywords and niches within those broad niche markets and so that's going to be what we talk about here is how to narrow those down SEO really begins with proper keyword research and to do your keyword research I recommend the Google AdWords keyword tool and you can get to it from adwords.google.com forward slash letter O keyword tool and you can actually just do a Google search for Google AdWords keyword tool as well the SEO book keyword tool SEO book is actually a really good website to really get a lot of really really good SEO Intel and it's a really good website that lays out the basics of SEO and it's been around a long time uh, the guy Aaron wall that's created it is just an outstanding authority on SEO and he keeps you up to date on the latest changes and you can actually just type in SEO book keyword tool these are two keyword tools they're gonna to give you slightly different variations and results and in Intel on certain keywords but they're really good for going in there and searching for proper phrases like starting off with weight loss but then under weight loss you're gonna find all kinds of different methods you know fitness under fitness alone which is under weight loss you've got fitness for senior citizens fitness for uh, pregnant mothers you've got fitness for uh, people trying to lose weight fitness for people trying to get in shape and better heart health you've got all kinds of things just under that and then under you know workouts for pregnant women there's a pile of other different keywords that you could be targeting and so the point here is you want to target as specific keywords as possible but you want to also be targeting keywords that will actually send you some sort of website traffic SEO includes making again changes to your site to help search engines find and display your content to their users that's again what it is and so that's where the keywords come into play as far as having your right keywords a really huge growing factor and this is something you really want to make sure you listen into is SEO is social signals and that is stuff you know come you know links from Facebook mentions of your brand on Facebook Twitter LinkedIn Pinterest Google Plus is a big one and we'll talk about that as we move forward but that's becoming really really huge you also want to get quality backlinks and content distribution it's not like it used to be where you would want to focus on getting uh, several let 
you know several hundred uh, backlinks or whatever you might be better off getting 10 really quality backlinks from either guest blogging or distributing your content to popular websites so it's really going to be a method where you're going to really focus in on creating uh, quality backlinks to your content so the first part of SEO is start with on-page SEO. This involves changing the HTML coding, which is the title tags and meta description. That's really where you're going to want to focus your efforts and attention on. This is how content is worded and displayed. So that's your title tag. You can see here in this example below here, you'll notice in Google, I typed in the phrase dog training collars and when I one of the websites that came up was this website you see from PetSmart this page from PetSmart and you'll notice in my tabbed browsing here in the top right corner right where that arrow is pointing that is actually where the title tag displays so if you're looking at your website right now and you are looking in your websites browser you would actually see inside your your web browser you should see at the very top there a set of keywords or at least the first part of your keywords that you're targeting and it should go from left to right just like you read that's how the search engines read and that's how they put weight on certain types of content so dog training collar is the first thing that they are actually seeing uh, right there in the search engines so that's really a, a really key part of SEO is make sure your keywords are in the title tag how your content is worded and displayed is also important as far as are you using your keywords in your copy are you overusing it that's a bad thing so you don't wanna overuse your keywords like I tell people is make your content make sense if it makes sense to you at the end of the day that's gonna make sense to your website visitors and that's essentially what Google's looking for they want relevant content that looks good and that is something that people are going to want to read the structure of your content and interlinking so when you're on your website how your content is linked together are you linking off to additional resources and posts within your site that's really important because that actually lets Google see that you have other important content pieces so let's say you're doing a blog post or a write-up about uh, travel tips uh, 25 hot destinations for travel or something like that you're doing a really nice article that's that's gonna get shared and a lot of attention and right below that you might have three other recommended articles or within that article you may link to another article of finding the perfect piece of luggage uh, and that might link to an article where you talk about finding the perfect piece of luggage for for what type of travel international uh, going to the beach those types of things uh, maybe that will give you some ways where you can kind of interlink your content because that is really really important on page uh, on page uh, changes the first thing you want to do is change your title tags so when you're doing any kind of on-page SEO which is kind of what we're looking at here you want to make sure you change your title tags your target keywords should appear in the title tag as we talked about target keyword should be in the title tag so just like this example below where the arrows pointing to dog training callers that's what you want to see in your web browser if it's not there you need to make sure you adjust that this is probably it is essentially the most important on page SEO factor because when you're doing any kind of Google searches the blue underlined part that you see in Google search results is the actual title tag it's actually pulled from the title tag you want to create unique title tags for each page of content you don't want to target the same keywords all throughout your website your title tag should be unique to that page and it could even be a couple of keywords that are targeted like you could have dog training collars and dog tracking collars or something like that could be a keyword for one particular page but what you really want to do is have a very unique focused title tag for each page of content so it should correlate perfectly with each one of your different pages of content you want to have no more than 70 characters and keep your site branding for the very end so you want to tell the search engines right off the bat left to right your most important keywords which in this case would be dog training callers and then at the end you could do dash your website name so keep your website branding branding at the end so you don't want to go your website name then dog training callers you want to go your keyword first, 
than your website brand name if you want to go that direction. You'll notice here in the search results, all the arrows that I've got pointing here, every single one of those arrows is going to a title tag. Those are all the title tags in those particular pages. So you can see here and really study this page the importance of title tags. This was after I did a search for dog training collars. And each one of those blue underlined text is the actual is the actual dog or is the actual title tag. And so that's where Google pulls it. That's why that is the most important part of search engine optimization. And you really want to make sure you have that in place because that can mean you're missing out on a lot of website traffic if you're not telling the search engines what exact keywords you're focusing in on. You'll see here how to edit your title tags and I'm going to focus more attention on this just because it is such an important part of search engine optimization. Editing your title tags, it's found near the top of the HTML coding and it appears like this in your HTML coding. So to get here you'd want to use like a editor called Composer, it's K-O-M-P-O-Z-E-R, Composer, it's a website editor. It's a free website editor, it's similar to Microsoft Front Page, Dreamweaver, Coffee Cup Editor, some of those other ones that you used to have to pay for. But Composer, K-O-M-P-O-Z-E-R, and it appears just like this in the HTML coding. You'll go to the source section, and you'll notice here it's going to say title, so it's going to have the little carrot to the left, and then the word title, and then that little carrot to the right, or arrow to the right, and then your keyword rich title tag here, that's obviously where your keywords would go, and then the title. And you see where that arrow is, that is exactly how it's going to look to you when you're looking at your coding. So if you're editing a standard HTML page, not a WordPress website, this is where you're going to go to change your title tags. You're going to go into an editor tool like Composer. So let's say you have a squeeze page or you have a website that was built using HTML or PHP or something like that where you can edit this type of coding. That's where you would go. So you'll want to use an HTML editor like Composer in source mode to edit this. And Composer is a free HTML editor. In WordPress, you could use a plugin like All in One SEO Pack. There's also another one called the Yoast SEO plugin, which is a really good one as well. So either one of those are going to be really good plugins uh, for you to look at because they can really help you drive traffic. Editing your title tag again, found near the top right there. So you can see here, on page change number two is improving how your content is displayed. So to do this, you want to use proper header tags. And these would be things like H1, H2, and H3. So those are not viruses. Those are actual header tags. Those are actually how search engines browse through and look at this stuff. You'll notice how your content is displayed here. The very top of the page is a header tag, small business loans. This page is very targeted for small business loans. If you actually read this content though, it makes sense. They aren't actually going out there and you know really abusing it in the sense that they're just stuffing this keyword in there. They're actually doing a really nice job of putting in a header. And a header would be almost like a section heading in a way that kind of leads directs people into you know the next part of that content. So you could do this very easily in WordPress. If you're doing a WordPress post, you actually can pull down uh, there's a pull down option. It typically is in the left hand side of your uh, WordPress content editor when you're editing a blog post and it'll say paragraph or style and you can actually pull down and choose like I want to use a header one or I want to use a header two and you don't want to use more than one of each of these if you can help it on the post especially the header one you want to try to focus that on that particular pages content so header one here H1 like small business loans where that top arrow is pointing at small business loans that would be a header number one. Right below that, you've got you know small business loans. That would be called a H2. That would be right below the first header. So you want to make sure at the very least that your first header actually has your keyword in it. 
because that's going to tell the search engine. The search engine see that that okay, this page is about small business loans because they see it in the title tag, they see it in the header, and then they see it in the content. Thirdly, and that really is what they kind of use to see okay, this page is relevant to this. And then the other most important element is to ensure your content is coherent, it's readable to your visitors because Google actually has ways of seeing how people are coming in and out of your website. Uh, you know how fast they're bouncing out of your website and so the longer people are sticking on your site meaning you're providing them the content they want the longer you're gonna end up ranking in the search engines so that in a nutshell is other another set of on-page changes you can make creating your proper header tags you could use an HTML editor like composer select your textile it'll say like heading one heading two and heading three composers really good about doing that as you create your comp your content again make sure you're incorporating your keywords into the header tags and in WordPress you can create header tags similar to composer like I talked about under the paragraph drop down choose your heading style and make sure it actually is set for your keywords your website's content uh, when you're writing your content, you do not want to overuse your keywords. Try to use your main keyword phrase in the opening and closing paragraph and then use it where it makes sense throughout the rest of your copy. So you don't want to like purposely say, oh, I need to stuff my keyword here. If it doesn't flow, don't use it. But if it makes sense, apply it in there. And, but at the very least, make sure it's in the opening paragraph and the closing paragraph along with being found in your header, meaning it's kind of like a, a header uh, that says like, like for example, small business loans, that could be your phrase. You could use it in attractive little header that says something like five ways to ensure you get a small business loan. But your keyword is in that header. Your keyword is found in the title tag. Then that's really important because that's going to tell the search engines this page is about small business loans. Write for humans and you will see a much better stick rate and you're going to end up getting much more traffic. A big mistake people made in the past with SEO was they were trying to write for the robots and that caused them a whole lot of problems is in that they weren't getting rankings. They were not getting ranked properly. It just was not working out for them. And so you want to make sure you write for humans and you will see a much better sticking rate. Focus on quality content. That's really, really important. And this is the type of content that you would want to find on, on a website. You know the types of websites you browse. You know which kind of content you read. So you want to have really quality content. If that means intermixing videos like that you've pulled in from YouTube, that's fine too. If that means linking out to different sources, then that's good too. That's really a good way to create content. It's come up with you know a list of top 10, top 10 travel destinations, top five ways to ensure you get a small business loan. Those types of things people really, really want. 25 website traffic methods, for example. Uh, you know Those are things people want, they're interested in, it's gonna draw their attention in, and they're gonna take a look at what you have to offer. On page change number three, is internal linking and I just refer to that as getting your content found. Set up a sitemap which contains all the links to your internal pages on one page or at least that links to a category that may link off to another set of your pages. But you want to make sure Google has a way of easily finding all your content at once. Generally sitemaps aren't going to be used by casual website browsers but Google, some people will but Google's really Google Yahoo being the major search engines you want them to find that because you want them to be able to easily find all your content and that's a nice thing about using a WordPress site is there's plugins that create your sitemap and they're also they do a really good job with the RSS or real simple syndication of actually already having that built in so it kinda helps let search engines know when your content is brand new if you're using WordPress, you could use the Google XML sitemaps plugin. That's a really good way to ensure your content gets found rather quickly. Use text-based links when linking internally to your pages. So that means you don't want to use links that have JavaScript or are hidden behind Flash. Uh, you want to try to avoid using image links. So you don't want to put like an image that says click here. You want to actually write the word uh, click here. 
It used to be in the past that when you would link to different internal pages, you would want to try to use the keywords that link to that page. But that's kind of lost its luster because a lot of people spam that. And so simple things like you know click here and discover how to do this, that that's fine too. Um, interlinking your keyword if it makes sense there, that's okay too. You just don't want to over abuse that kind of strategy. Uh, don't link through, again, JavaScript links, images, Flash, those types of things. Need to be text-based links, meaning it's just a text like you're seeing on the screen, but that would be a link to your page. WordPress sites, again, have an RSS feed, which is just another huge plus. So that really helps get your content found and helps you get that exposure. On page change number four is improve your site's page speed. That's another thing that really will help enhance your overall search engine optimization efforts. Check the page speed of your home page using Google's Page Speed Insights tool. These are the types of tools, these are the things that if anybody, if you hire anybody to do search engine optimization on your website, they're going to follow at the very least these first four steps uh, to really get an idea. So this is kind of giving you a leg up uh, so you're not having to shell out five hundred a thousand dollars to get an SEO analysis. You can run a search Excuse me. On the page speed, you can run a search for Google's Page Speed Insights tool, and that will actually tell you uh, where your site could improve. Like maybe you have too many images that are loading, and that tool will really give you some insight as to uh, where you need to improve things. Other important SEO considerations is you really want to incorporate social sharing buttons on your site. I told you that social signals are becoming a huge factor in where websites rank and how they rank. Uh, you want to include at the very least Google Plus, Facebook, and Twitter buttons. You can actually use something uh, it's called the Add This Sharing Tool. You can actually create a Google Plus, Facebook, and Twitter pages, and then link to those from your website using a tool called the Add This, which creates all your little social sharing buttons, including like your LinkedIn page if you want to have that out there as well and that's really important and then you also want to make sure you're using the social sharing um, options as well the dig dig plugin it's d-i-g-g -G, d-i-g-g -G, dig dig and it works really well as far as on each one of your blog posts it will actually have an option where people could share it through Twitter Facebook uh, Google Plus those things are really important because as people share those things those are called social signals those are kinda like what backlinking used to be back in the day of search engine optimization they're becoming really really important you want to keep your content updated and fresh keep it new keep new content coming if that means hiring somebody to do uh, blogging for you then that's what it's gonna take that's what you need to do when creating your content focus on quality over quantity so you don't necessarily when I say keep your content updated you don't need to have uh, you know a new post a day if it's one or two blog posts a week and they're really high quality blog posts that's great that's gonna be just fine that's gonna that's gonna be okay for you you're gonna get a lot of traffic that way create content that would encourage shares from other people you want to create those like top 10 articles that I was talking about um, if that means combining you could even go through YouTube and find 10 videos that apply to your niche market and put those into a blog post you could find 10 inspirational quotes and say top 10 inspirational videos for fitness gurus or something and you could put that into a post and embed each one of those 10 videos you could link off to different you know send a link to find different news articles that talk about a certain weight loss method that's called some people would consider that content curation and that is what it's called and that's where you're basically taking bits and pieces of information uh, top 25 shoes uh, top five video games of all time and you could link off to articles that argue those things I mean you get the idea whatever your niche is you can really find content that you could do top 10 articles how to articles do really well how to do certain methods and things uh, case study articles do well get a lot of attention you want to create content that fits your niche audience that's the most important element incorporate pictures videos and external links to other sources that's a really nice simple way to create fast content that's actually super high quality 
And if you do not have a blog already, which I would recommend because it's a good foundation for anything, make sure you have a blog. So if you have a standard e-commerce type website just selling physical products, you want to eventually make sure you add a blog to it that you add relevant content to. Because that's a, a blog's a really good way to incorporate things like the Dig Dig social sharing uh, plugin. It's a great way to incorporate other sharing methods so people can share your content. The social signals are kind of like the what backlinks used to be, you know, how they were so important. Another thing that you can do, another SEO consideration and tip, do a Google search for the following site colon your domain dot com to see how it is being indexed. That will actually tell you you don't want to put HTTP or www in front of the your domain. You want to put site colon your domain dot com. That's going to tell you how many of your pages are being indexed. So you'll have a rough idea as to how many pages of content you may have. And that's going to tell you is Google finding my content okay. Uh, so if you actually go through that and see that they're finding most of your pages, then that means they're, that your content is being indexed. And since it's being indexed properly, you know you know at that point what you need to do to either improve that like add a site map or everything's okay because they're finding your content SEO and backlinking again I talked about you know backlinking is not as effective as it used to be but it still improves your website's ranking and it's still something to focus on especially if you focus on it with the intent of sharing good quality content out there and if your really main intention is to just generate more exposure for yourself that happens to link into your website, that's where backlinking can definitely benefit you. You only want to get links from quality sources. So quality links are way more valuable than a large quantity of links. And when I say quality of links, they could be relevant blogs in your industry. They could be a directory that's very niche focused to the market you're going after. It could be a link on a very high traffic forum in that mark in your marketplace. Don't just do one backlinking strategy like say hey I'm only going to do press release backlinks. But just like overall website traffic, now here we're focusing a lot on SEO. The cool thing is is a lot of these back when I talk about getting quality backlinks each one of the future traffic methods that I talk about are going to be ways they're going to generate exposures for your website, some social signals, and then backlinks to your site. So it's going to kind of incorporate into this overall SEO plan that I'm laying out here. You want to have variety with your backlinking and make sure you're getting links from social sharing type websites. So those would be Squidoo type pages where you can go in there and you can post your own content, social uh, bookmarking sites that may be relevant to your niche market. It's like it used to be where you would want to go out and say, hey, I want to hire somebody and use a tool or software that's going to get me 500 of these type of backlinks. Well, that's not as effective as it used to be. And so it's better to just kind of focus in on creating good valuable content that you can then get shared out there. The best links are those you don't work for, which means you need to focus on creating extremely engaging content. Examples would be to look at your competitor website, see what kind of content they're creating. If they have social sharing buttons like Dig Dig that tell them that this article was shared uh, 15 times or this article was shared 25 times or 28 times, then that's where you need to uh, really focus on. Content distribution through article distribution, press releases, videos, it's still an awesome way to get backlinks and ultimately exposure. Even though those backlinks may or may not enhance your search engine positioning, it's going to increase your you know, your following online. It's going to drive people in from video sites, from press release sites, from those high traffic article sites, and it's all going to be focused on content that's driving people to content and traffic within your niche. And we'll talk about each one of these methods in more detail, uh, most of those in part two, especially articles, press releases, and videos. So that was all we have for SEO. There's there's a whole lot more to it, and this whole course is intended to be an overview of these different traffic strategies, but also give you enough content to where you can be dangerous with these methods. So now we're here with traffic method number two, which is Facebook. Facebook, it's the absolute most visited website online according to Alexa. That right there tells you it's a website that you should be looking at for getting traffic. 
There are multiple ways you can use Facebook to get traffic to your site and offers. There's Facebook like and share buttons that you could put on your website. We talked about that with social signals as part of SEO. But Facebook like and share buttons, you can get those through like Add This has them, uh, the Dig Dig plugin. Facebook even has pages where you can just embed their share buttons. And that's a really important thing. So getting your content shared by other people on Facebook, that's going to be really important. Facebook uh, profile, you obviously want to have a Facebook profile, especially if you're really serious about doing this. Facebook pages, that would be another thing to really focus in on if I were you, is to generate and create your own Facebook page. Facebook ads, Facebook ads are going to be something that uh, you really want to, you know, that's going to be essential for you. Facebook ads will really can drive you very targeted amount of traffic. With Facebook ads, you can actually target down to age group, gender, and you know what their interests are. Like you could type in their interest in is model trains and golfing, and you could narrow down by their their age. You know, ages 45 to 75, if you wanted to. And Facebook can get you really targeted exposure, very targeted exposure to your offer. So Facebook ads is another way to get traffic. Facebook sponsored posts, that's where you simply, you may post something like let's say you have a lot of Facebook friends or you have a Facebook page with a lot of followers. You could make a page, a post, and then it'll have an option right below it that says promote this post. It's like $6.99. And I've actually done that and I've actually, it actually gets me quite a bit of clicks, almost you know 100 clicks or something for that low amount of money, which is actually a lot cheaper than a lot of other uh, pay-per-click methods. So there's promoted post as well, sponsored post as they call it. Facebook groups, you could create a whole group around your niche market. So you could create a group around model train lovers if that's the market you're going after. And within that group, since you're the moderator, you can post you know every once in a while post links to your website. You don't want to actually create a group with the intention of, hey, I'm just going to spam them with my content because that's not going to work. It's not going to build a good group, but you want to have a group that has good discussion, maybe debates in there about different types of trains that they like to collect or different debates as to who's the better person on Dancing with the Stars, those types of things. And then you can casually, you know, put in links to your own resources in there but Facebook groups is definitely another way so you've got like and share buttons Facebook profile Facebook pages Facebook ads Facebook sponsored post and Facebook groups these are all excellent ways uh, to get traffic here is the Facebook like and share button you can place this button on your site you will find that again on Facebook the dig dig social sharing plugin has it uh, WordPress does have plugins for that. Add this also offers Facebook sharing options and it's another really good tool to look at. Encourage website visitors to share your content. Uh, encourage them at the end of each post. Hey, if you like this post, make sure you share it or uh, you know, I, I'm going to hold a contest that anybody that shares this, you're going to be entered in for a $50 Amazon gift card. I mean, whatever the case is, encourage them to visit. Now, you don't want to be buying people uh, off for sharing your stuff, but you could do a contest, you know, that they're entered into a contest for sharing this. Or you could do just basically create good content. If you have good content, people are going to be more apt to share it with their friends. Facebook profiles, you can share your blog posts on your profile to your friends and most of the time you might have joint venture partners. I do a lot of joint venture marketing through my Facebook profile. I, I find people in that market and I friend them. On your profile, include your main website or where you work. Friend people in your industry. These could be potential JV partners even uh, that you are finding. Actively friend people in your marketplace. Actively be actively seeking people uh, that you know or that you know of or that have products and you'll be surprised how many may friend you. Facebook pages. You can go to facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create and you can create a Facebook page about your brand or your website uh, and just kind of create a page that describes what you have to offer. Local businesses, this is great for company, brand or product, public figure or cause. They give you several different options to create them. 
promote your page on your site and you could also promote it in Facebook ads for relatively cheap you could really actually grow your Facebook page following with Facebook ads by sending targeted Facebook ads to a targeted demographic and group of people include a link to your site give updates overview of your services or what you offer those are all things you could do on your Facebook page connect with your audience you could run contests uh, different contests of uh, different things so if you comment here I will enter you into a contest um, if you do this then you know you'll be entered into a contest or you could even run promotions like like our Facebook page and get 15 percent off or take this in to the pizza shop today and get 10% off your order let them know you found us on Facebook those types of things or you could even do something like say the word pizza and get 15% off today you could actually do that kind of stuff that kind of social engagement on your Facebook page Facebook ads facebook.com forward slash advertising target your specific demographic down to the age and interest they make it really simple for you promote your page you could promote a landing page like a squeeze page that might generate uh, leads for you you could also promote it through a blog run very simple ads you can look at other examples of ads that are currently running uh, one thing to really look at and this works just as well for Google AdWords too is really look at what kind of ads have you seen run multiple times over and over again like maybe for like the last week uh, maybe it's an ad you've seen ran for several months you know that ad is doing something because it's getting it's staying there and people are still willing to pay for it traffic method number two is Facebook sponsored post you'll see here in that link you can actually after you make a post and you want to make sure it's a post that maybe promotes like your joint venture page if you have a targeted following maybe it promotes your product but you want to click on that to promote that particular post it'll show up higher in your friends feed and if you have a targeted following of friends that's where you could go Facebook groups you can go to facebook.com forward slash about forward slash groups you could create a group to bring people together around your niche market for example people interested in real estate investing improving their putting getting more search engine traffic being a better parent healthy eating group uh, those types of things are groups you could create and then you could recommend every once in a while links on your blog post maybe video you created maybe the casual affiliate link to an offer or product you recommend you don't want to spam it you don't want to go overboard here but Facebook groups can be a great way to create discussion and get a group of targeted interested people and as I mentioned earlier Facebook is one of the most visited websites in the United States especially so you may as well target that website and leverage it for long-term gain you can promote your site inside the group as well traffic method number three is Pinterest Pinterest is a pin board style photo sharing website users can create groups of images around themes this is traffic method number three Pinterest is another social type website if you have a website with a lot of pictures I didn't mention this in social signals uh, but I will now if you have a website with a lot of pictures you'll want to try to also include the Pinterest sharing option as well because that may really enhance your traffic Pinterest is a it's a pin board style photo sharing site. Users can create groups of images around themes which are called pin boards. You could create a public pin boards that are focused around your niche. You could create a pin board that's focused around uh, border collies or puppies, for example. If if border collies is your niche or puppies are, or you're in the dog uh, market, like let's say you're selling pet products, then you could create different pin boards around different breeds of dogs or different breeds or types of cats. And within that, you could encourage people to share and post those things. You'll be amazed at how rapidly uh, fast people actually are joining Pinterest and how quick you may end up getting quite a bit of following on that particular pin board and inside your profile that's where you would set up your information you could create and add your own pictures to the pin board you could share other pictures that you find on any images you create you may want to consider including your website link at the bottom maybe in a smaller right hand corner of it maybe right near the bottom that way if it gets shared around Pinterest for example you're getting website traffic from that because people see your website there 
You could also consider content-rich infographics. You've probably seen those. Those are the big graphics that actually have a lot of information on them. They may talk about uh, top 10 ways to lose weight, and inside that you could give statistics of different weight loss methods or top five cardiovascular workouts. And you can almost do almost like a blog post, but in a graphic. And you can just Google how to create infographics, and there's quite a few really good tutorials out there. You want to try to use images on all your blog posts because if people are on your website and they end up liking the content, they could share your content, your article piece on Pinterest because when they share it, it shares it with your direct link. And Pinterest, again, is another high authority website. So creating pin boards around your, your theme and your niche, those are all good ways. Be as creative and unique as possible to stand out, especially if you're creating your own images. But at the very least, create pin boards that are focused around your market that bring in the type of people you're interested in. And believe me, you'll find it. Pinterest is a huge website. You could type in fitness for pregnant women on Pinterest and you'll find all kinds of workouts or you could even do workouts for pregnant women. And you could combine a bunch of different pictures in there and you could start seeing a following of people that are interested in that topic and a few of those images you could link off to your website where maybe you have a list of other uh, workouts for pregnant women or at the very least you could also focus in on on your profile make sure when you set up your profile that you include your website link because with your pictures they'll actually have your little icon that shows hey this was shared by John Smith if they click on that look at your profile they'll see your website so it's another way to get that so make sure you're including your website link on your Pinterest profile and here's an example of what it looks like you'll see this one here fun border collie puppies uh, you'll see here where I'm pointing at they Pinterest does a really good job of actually bringing in search engine optimization elements into their website. So you can see from this example here that I'm link I'm got an arrow pointing fun dash border dash collie dash puppies. They do a really good job there. You notice it in the title tag, and then you're also going to notice right here. There's just two pictures on this board, but it's got 302 followers, and that was just from just posting something up there for fun, just to see what would happen. And there's there's just two pins. I just have two pictures, but I have 302 followers. And you'll notice here the website that I shared these from. They're actually the ones that are end up getting the traffic if you clicked on it here. Um, now, if I were to curate a bunch of images or create my own images or images that I have the rights to use and and work on, then it would be my website in particular getting this traffic uh, but you can see here there's my profile if they click on it they're gonna go to my website too and, and the website could be about around pets you know they might come across it but 302 followers for that one little Pinterest board traffic method number four Twitter Twitter is one of the most popular social media sites online we all know that many people have heard of it Twitter is a micro blogging platform that allows for 140 characters. So it's 140 characters. It's not like Facebook where you can post a longer post or Pinterest where it's about pictures, but it's just a short, succinct way to get a message out there. You can get traffic by adding a Twitter button to your website. So that's another thing you can do. Just like with Facebook, you can have a Twitter sharing button or say tweet this post, those types of things. AddThis.com is a great suite of social sharing tools. So you can include the sharing buttons that you could post on your website. Um, if you are using WordPress, you could use a plugin like the Dig Dig plugin to include your Twitter followers. Followers. Twitter is really important. Twitter, uh, you want to increase your Twitter followers, and you can get Twitter uh, shares or tweets of your post. And that's actually the element that Google considers a social signal. For each time somebody shares your post, that is considered a social signal. And so with Twitter, you want to have as many of those as possible. So that's why you want to include things like the Dig Dig plugin, um, the Add This, Shilso sharing tools. You want to also include a link to your website or your company's Twitter profile or your own Twitter profile. And make sure you're setting up your own profile for you or your company or both. Have one for your company and have one for you, uh, depending on how you do it. Follow like-minded people in your niche. You can go to Twitter and you can go out there and you can find the go-to experts in your market 
and start following those people that follow them. You know whatever niche market you're in, who the big players are. So go to their Twitter account and actually look at the people that are following those big experts and just start following them and go by Twitter standards. You don't there's a limit and it and it varies by different accounts. So you maybe want to follow maybe 25 or 50 people the first day and then just kind of gradually grow up. But the more people you follow, you're going to start getting follow back. You may only get half of them to follow you, but let's say every day you follow 20 people. Well, you get 10 new followers a day if only half of those start following you. And those 10 people that are following you are now you know they're interested in your market because they're following the go-to experts in your niche. So you each day you do that, by the end of the month, you might have 300 Twitter followers. By the end of the year, you may have uh, 12, you know, you'll have 1,200 Twitter, no, you'll have 3,600 Twitter followers, over 3,000 Twitter followers by the end of the year if you focus on doing this on a daily basis. And these are people that you know are interested in your topic. So when you start posting blog posts, you're going to have some people that are targeted in your niche that may go across and come across your blog post. Hopefully they'll follow you back. They may or may not. If they don't, you can just you know delete the ones that don't. There are tools you can actually Google, uh, like Twitter unfollow tools, where you can see if they're not following you back. You can actually uh, just you know just cancel them and quit following them. That way your numbers aren't out of whack on your Twitter account. But that's a really fast way to kind of grow your Twitter following. You could link to your blog post on Twitter. It's an excellent way to get your blog post indexed and to start getting exposure, even if you have next to no followers. Um, and so you want to, at the very minimum, spend 15 minutes a day building your Twitter out uh, because it's really good for getting social shares and those types of things as well. Give new information and share industry specific content. It doesn't always have to be your blog post. Just give industry specific news and content, launch updates, uh, you know, interesting products, interesting articles. Those types of things are going to get people interested in what you have to offer. Interact with people that follow you. You know, look at what they're talking about and then write them back and say, hey, I agree with you here. Interact, start the conversation. That's going to really help you build up your Twitter following and your Twitter exposure. This is what Twitter looks like. This is what Google's uh, Twitter account looks like. Uh, so this this is what Twitter looks like. You can share articles, share content. Uh, you'll see here they've got 6 million followers, but that's Google. And so you know you could have a thousand two thousand followers you start with 500 you're gonna start somewhere so start following people in your market and get out there and start using Twitter traffic method number five pay-per-click ads or PPC ads as they're referred to sometimes PPC ads or pay-per-click ads can be a reliable traffic source in fact it's probably one of your most reliable traffic sources because you can get you can almost know when you're going to get traffic and you can shut it off as well. So it's a, it's a very good traffic source in that sense. You can test offers out with it. It's a really good source. AdWords.Google.com, that's where you would go. And then if you want to get on Bing and Yahoo, which I highly recommend, you may as well use them all, BingAds.Microsoft.com. Or you can just Google the phrase Google AdWords or you could Google Bing Ads and you'll come across it. You pay for each click to your website. So each time someone visits your site, you pay for it. Whether it's ten cents or four dollars a click, you really want to make sure you know your numbers because some niche markets can be a lot more than other markets. And that's where it comes into play again about targeting really targeted and focused keywords. It can be the fastest way to get any kind of targeted web traffic that you control. If you have a new offer up there and you want to start getting traffic, Paid advertising is probably the best way to go. Uh, Facebook, when I talked about Facebook ads earlier, they have Facebook pay-per-click ads. So you can almost kind of lump that in here with this traffic method. But you've got Google AdWords, Bing ads, and Yahoo ads. You've got Facebook ads, which are considered pay-per-click ads. And again, it's very fast the fastest way to get any kind of targeted traffic that you control. You bid what you're willing to pay on certain keyword phrases. And so you want to make sure the keywords you're bidding on are phrases that are, that are going to drive you the actual kind of traffic that you are interested in. It's important to have a budget and a plan in, in price because you can blow through your budget very, very quickly. So make sure you have a plan in place. What are your business goals? Is it to get leads? sales, affiliate commissions, uh, build up your Facebook page following, 
those types of things. What are your goals? What are your expected conversion rates? You need to know these numbers when you're running pay-per-click ads. What is the average value of each sale or lead? Is it a dollar a lead? Is it you know each lead because they stay on your list for a long time worth fifty dollars a year to you? Uh, some people it is. Is it worth uh, twelve dollars a year? You know maybe it's a dollar per lead uh, per month type thing. So is it worth twelve dollars? So let's say they're worth twelve dollars a lead for you, and you're spending let's say four dollars to get that one lead then you're gonna profit eight dollars it's gonna be worth it to you so you gotta know these numbers or else it's not gonna be profitable for you how much are you making on a commission are you making twenty five dollars per sale when you sell this product but it's costing you twenty eight dollars to get that one sale well that's not a good return on your investment but let's say you're making twenty five dollars commission and you're only spending ten dollars to make that twenty five you're profiting fifteen every time you run that ad so you may as well keep it going so you gotta know your numbers you gotta know your goals to make pay-per-click work effectively for you but it is a phenomenal way like I said to get any kind of targeted traffic in a fast amount of time SEO takes time social media is gonna take time Facebook and Twitter those are all gonna take time um, you know, Facebook ads, all this, the stuff that we've mentioned previously is going to take time uh, to get you traffic, but pay per click ads are really effective. Look at other ads as examples when creating your ads. Geo target your ads to only places that are relevant. So if your ad is only good for English speaking people, then you maybe only want to target, you know, like Canada, the United States, Australia, and, and a few other English speaking countries. If your offer is only good for US only, like your local business, then just target the United States only. If it's good only in Europe, then just target Europe. Don't target other unneeded sources because that's going to just lead to over expense, you know, and you're spending more money. Consider using ad extensions like site links. They offer site link ads, which means you could link off to internal uh, content pieces on your site. Know your market and schedule ads when they are going to convert. A lot of times people will know, you know, like between Monday through Friday, I'm going to get the best results. And on the weekends, I don't really get that many people. So I'm going to shut my ads off on the weekend. So know those types of things as well. Now, if you're in a market like the work from home, home business type market, those people, they're up all, they could be up all the time. So you could just run your ads all day long. But if you're in a very specific sector of the market where let's say you're zeroed in on getting traffic. Uh, you know, let's say you're you're in the financial type niche, and people part of your lead system and follow up system is you want to be able to call that person back that day. Then you don't want to be running your ads on the weekend if nobody's there to call people back or to answer phone calls or answer emails or whatever the case is. So you would shut your ads off the weekend. So use ad scheduling to your advantage. You don't have to be at the top to get traffic with pay-per-click you do not have to be in fact sometimes you don't want to be because you're going to be at the top and sometimes people are casual browsers so they'll go to the first ad and decide oh that's not for me then maybe the second ad and maybe the third or fourth ad they might actually stay on there because they're just kind of casually browsing you're going to spend more to be at the top as well now in some cases it's good to be on top because you're going to be getting more traffic that way obviously but is it a good return on you so bid for return on investment bid for that best return on investment it might cost you two dollars a click to be in position number one but if you're in position say number four let's say it might only cost you uh, 75 cents a click well that's a dollar 25 cent different per click and so you're probably better off sitting there in position number four you're gonna get a better return on your investment Use the Google AdWords keyword tool to identify keywords. I talked about that when I talked about SEO, but that's a really effective tool for finding proper keywords as well, to keywords that you can target. Consider targeting keywords by exact and phrase match, so that way you're not uh, doing broad targeting. So like for example, if you were doing broad match, dog training callers might show up for anything about callers, which could mean cats. It might show up for training, which could be somebody interested in fitness it could come up for dogs which could be a variety of different topics with dogs everything from boarding dogs to shampooing dogs to taking them for walks and not be targeted to what you have but phrase and exact match they're not going to get you probably as many uh, clicks or as much ex as many impressions as you may want meaning how many times your ad shows but it's going to actually get you a very exact 
that very exact keyword phrase. So dog training collars, it your ad will show up for that exact keyword phrase. And that in the long haul is going to be better for you. May not get you the most traffic right away, but it most of the time is going to be better because you're getting the type of visitor you want. You're getting people that typed in dog training collars to your dog training collars page. You've got phrase match, which is where you put your keyword in quotes when you're actually inputting your keyword. And then exact match is where you put your keywords into the brackets when you're actually doing the targeting of your keywords as you set up your like your Google AdWords account. And this is mainly something you see in Google AdWords. Bing ads and Yahoo ads do have something similar that you could consider. This is where pay-per-click ads generally show up in case you're wondering and this is where I would go to identify what kind of ads do you see running in your market like I typed in the phrase pet feeders here and you'll see there are the, the ads that I'm pointing to you'll see several different uh, links here you'll see uh, within the pet feeders there it's usually at the top of the search results and then the right hand side and then Google's actually done a really nice job of incorporating sponsored listings in with shopping type keyword phrases and that's a whole nother realm of pay-per-click ads paid banner ads have a banner ad created on fiverr.com for your business paid banner ads is just another way to get traffic similar to Google pay-per-click but you're at, you might be buying impressions so you might say hey I'm gonna buy 10,000 impressions meaning your ad is gonna show 10,000 times your banner ad on a certain website or you could pay per click off your banner as well have a banner ad created on fiverr.com you could actually have a clean looking banner created probably for about five bucks maybe ten bucks if it's premium search for design banner ad you'll probably find people offering that uh, you could use other freelancing sites like freelancer.com and the goal here is to place your banner ads on targeted websites. So you want to place your ad, your banner ad on websites that are going to get the kind of traffic you want. So these are websites that are targeted to your industry, to your market. So you're going to place an ad for model trains on a website that might be like a model train magazine type site. Or you're going to place your ads for custom sports apparel on a team maybe a team website a website for like team sports for kids and stuff like that you're gonna to wanna to place that ad there because they're gonna be looking for uniforms so that gives you the idea you could use freelancing site like freelancer.com if you don't want to use Fiverr but you really wanna it would really help you to get a banner ad eventually to have one created for your website even if it's a casual affiliate type site if you can get a banner ad created for five dollars it's a good tool to have because you can actually take that banner ad and place it for rather inexpensive on some websites on targeted websites so you want to find sites in your niche to place your banner ad on Google search your niche and then in quotes type in advertise here so you could type in golfing and then put in quotes advertise here or you could type in dogs and put in advertise here example you could do weight loss advertise here so that would tell you that would pull up websites that have an advertise here button so you could actually place banner ads on those pages you could also Google search the phrase in quotes and the reason you do this in quotes is because it gives you kind of more of an exact search results to what's coming back your banner ad here that's what a lot of websites will, will say when they're saying hey you could have your banner ad placed here look for banners on websites and blogs that you frequent a lot of blogs offer banner ad space so look at uh, the website you're on if you see banner ads there's a good chance you could contact them about placing it the most important part is you want to make sure it's targeted to your niche market and when you create that banner ad that banner ad is going to link to a page on your site most of the time where I would send them is to a lead generation type page that way you're building up an email list and that's another way to get long-term traffic is your email list because you're building that list up and you can send them an email that gets you traffic a lot of blogs offer banner ad space so keep your eyes open for those Google search another one powered by cranky ads and then weight loss or your niche keyword here the reason you want to do that cranky ads is a tool it's a plugin that a lot of people use on their websites to manage their banner advertising so if you Google search powered by cranky ads and then your niche you're going to come across several different places in your marketplace that are actually carrying uh, banner ad space opportunities. So you could place your banner ad on several different sites. Make sure you use a tracking link so you know your performance. You could use something like Bud URL, 
Uh, you could use bit.ly and those types of things will tell you what kind of traffic you're getting. There's also other uh, monthly paid options out there as well like Link Tracker and other programs. Those will actually tell you which banner ad is getting you the kind of clicks you're looking for. That way you know do I want to keep this banner ad here or do I want to renew it or not. Because a lot of times you're just going to pay for placement. You might pay them $50 a month to run your banner ad. And so if it's not working out for you then you could move on to something else. Understand where the banner ad will be placed before you purchase it. That's really important. And then make sure your banner ad that you're linking off to a page on your website. Most of the time you want to link it to like a lead generation page. Know what the cost per impression or click is for that particular banner ad. That's another really important thing uh, to consider as well. Is what is the cost per click so you can calculate your return on investment. Here's an example of banner ads. You'll see here, uh, right here on the left hand side, this is an RV type website. And you'll see here, right there, they've got a banner ad space going. Now they're, they're kind of using also Google AdWords as well within their website. So you could actually potentially place a Google AdWords banner on this particular website. Google has like a Google placement option as well. Um, but you could just find websites in your niche that are that are using banner ads and that's an example of what it would look like so you've got a banner ad and you could have different sizes make you could have the taller one there you could have a the ones that go horizontal the ones that go vertical the skinnier vertical ones square ads uh, sometimes work well so you may want to have a couple banner ads created uh, to fit your needs and before you even get a banner created you could go find several websites and then figure out what size you need but that's an example of what banner ads look like the most important thing is your your banner ad should fit with the target audience of the website. This website's about RVs. They're selling insurance for you know RV owners because that's something they would need. So that would be the you know an example of a good targeted ad. Traffic method number seven, and we have four this method and then a few other ones that we're going to be covering today, and then we'll be all wrapped up for part number one of this traffic series. Method number seven is Amazon. So with Amazon, you can actually uh, several different ways to get traffic from Amazon. You can do fulfillment by Amazon, where you could sell CDs or DVDs like information type products. You could actually create a bunch of them, give Amazon the DVDs and CDs, and then they could actually ship them out for you and you could be piggybacking off of Amazon's immense search engine and millions and millions of buyers that they have. They have a lot of users, a lot of buyers. You could sell your site's products on Amazon.com. Uh, they actually let you do that. Amazon Advantage, it's a self-service consignment for media type products. Uh, you could actually post your media type products. So let's say you have music and CDs, you could do that there. Um, Amazon product ads, if you have an e-commerce site where you're selling physical products through a website or a website catalog, then you would actually you could actually post your ads right alongside of those relevant products and then when people click on that you're getting charged pay per click so Amazon kinda has their own pay per click thing Amazon display ads just like banner ads on Amazon um, but you can actually run them on Amazon publishing a book on Amazon Kindle include your website link in that book where it makes sense uh, so include it at the beginning maybe maybe a few times in the book if it makes sense uh, but Kindle can be a great way to get traffic. We all know Kindle is huge. It also is a good way to generate passive income for yourself. Publishing a physical book through CreateSpace is another great way to build up your authority and also to get you long-term traffic because you have your link out there in a physical book. So it's a really tremendous way to get yourself long-term traffic uh, that you have going out there. So Amazon, there are a lot of different methods you can use. I would recommend going to Amazon.com, looking at the bottom of their site, and just seeing all the options they have for you. They are loaded, actually, with potential, because this is another huge traffic source. You can actually go to their page that says Make Money with Amazon, and they will tell you all types of different services about how to sell on Amazon. You can actually sell and list your own products on Amazon, kind of like your own eBay type store. You could have your own Amazon web store. Fulfillment by Amazon. Amazon payments, you could use them for payment. Advertise with product ads or display ads. 
publishing with Kindle and CreateSpace. There are just so many possibilities with Amazon uh, that you can use to earn money and also most importantly get traffic and exposure from targeted sources. So look at Amazon display ads. Amazon product ads, fulfillment by Amazon, sell your own products on Amazon, your web store, Amazon Advantage, just lots of possibilities to take a look at. So go to Amazon.com, look at the bottom, and take a look at their Make Money tab and see how you can leverage any one of these, these traffic methods for your own business. Blogging, traffic method number eight. Blogging is one of the best ways to get consistent web traffic. WordPress is absolutely the best blogging platform out there on the market. You could use the social media plugins like Dig Dig or Add This. I've been really harping on that mainly because it's so important to SEO. So if you're doing any kind of blogging, make sure you use those social sharing options because that is essentially what search engines want. They want to see people socially engaged on your websites. They want to see website visitors that share your content. That's going to be really important. You can use the Yoast SEO or all-in-one SEO pack plugin. That will actually do all the SEO things needed for your blog that were mentioned in traffic method number one. Create a consistent content creation schedule. It doesn't have to be daily. It could be once or twice a week. or And it doesn't have to be on the same day. You could just set a goal though. Each week I want to have two blog posts. I want to have one blog post that's kind of like a curated type content piece. I want to have another one that's like a how-to article. Whatever the case is, create a consistent content creation schedule. Consistency is key to being an effective blogger. Quality posts are better than a large quantity of posts. You're much better off having 10 really good posts as opposed to 100 posts that are like 250, 300 words that have thin content on them. Search engines don't appreciate that. They will appreciate the 10 high quality, higher word articles than they will the lower, um, the large quantity of posts. Consider when you're doing your content, create list, top 10 places to travel, top 5 golf courses in the country, uh, top 8 ball, ballparks to visit, uh, top, top 25 theme parks in the country, top 6 water parks. Create list, content curation. Content creation works really well because you could link off, you could find relevant sources. You could just come up with the topic that you want to write about and then find that content online and then write your own little info on it, your own little ideas or your input around that subject matter and then link off to that article post. Embed videos and images. Find videos on Flickr. Find uh, other pictures that you have a right to use. Use videos from YouTube. You don't even have to create the videos. If the video does a good job of explaining what you're trying to explain in your blog post or does a good job of helping people in your niche market, then by all means embed that video and use it. Create content that your niche wants. Your niche wants and desires certain types of content. So create the content that they are desperate for and that they are interested in. Create a community and open up commenting. So you could use like the Discus, D-I-S-Q-U-S, uh, commenting plugin to kind of help create that community. Or you could just use the standard commenting feature that's involved with, with uh, your blog platform which I would recommend is WordPress. If you're not blogging on WordPress, you're really setting yourself up for a world of hurt later on. Create a community and open up commenting uh, within that community. And that way, that's going to be more social engagement, which search engines will see, and it's going to get people to stick on your website. You'll see all the major blogs and websites, they have a lot of content. They have a nice community being built around that content. Use a plugin like the spam free WordPress plugin or a Kismet for spam. That will actually make your blog efforts that much easier. It's also going to prevent a lot of comment spam, which may close down your website or make it hard to, to open. Um, and it's also going to free you up because you're not spending all this time deleting these. Those posts do a really good job of just deleting those kind of spammy comments that come through. Share all your new posts on social media channels with your followers. So share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it on Google+. That's probably the most important one to really share it on because that's going to Google really puts a lot of weight on that one. 
Here's an example of a nice looking blog. Uh, this is a blog about weight loss that this person has generated. You can see here she's got you know lots of good content. She's monetized it with advertisements. Um, she's got good categories, but most importantly, look at the top right corner. She's got her Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest up there. Especially for like weight loss type stuff, Pinterest does really well because people like to see before and after type pictures. Um, but you can see at the very least she's got her Facebook, her Twitter and her Pinterest so she's using social signals she's got her Facebook page like button in the right hand corner there and so that's the kind of thing you want to do with your blog and you can use as far as a theme goes there's a variety of really good free WordPress themes that you can find you can just Google free premium WordPress theme to come across those ones Traffic method number nine. This goes right in hand with blogging. If you're doing any kind of blogging, um, especially if you have a blog, RSS stands for Real Simple Syndication. It's a fast way to distribute updates to your website across the web. It also provides a great way to get quality backlinks from social relevant websites. And you can submit to RSS feed directories and RSS search engines. You can actually search for blog directories or RSS uh, feed directories and you can find them. They're sometimes referred to, like I said, as blog directories. To find them, run a Google search for RSS blog directories and the way you get traffic is you actually submit your RSS feed which most of the time when you're using WordPress, almost all the time, it is going to be your blog domain.com, so your domain.com or your blog.com forward slash feed, F E E D, and that's going to be your RSS feed. That's what you're going to submit to these RSS feed directories that you come across. So do a Google search for RSS blog directories, RSS submission, those types of keywords to find them. The site toprankblog.com has a really good list of sites to submit to. So if you Google search RSS blog directories, you may find this site called toprankblog.com in there. And they have a really good list of RSS feed submission sites that you can go to to save you a lot of time. And you can just go there. It's a really easy process. You could probably submit to a whole pile of them within an hour, maybe two hours. Once you're done, what the nice thing about it Every time you do a new blog post, it automatically updates on all these different websites that you've linked to. So every time you do a new blog post, it automatically goes out there. So the followers and people on these websites see you updated it. It tells a search engine that you updated it. And that really helps you drive a nice amount of new traffic to each one of your blog posts. So use RSS submissions, especially if you're going to be utilizing blogging. This is an example of what a blog submission might look like. So you can see here by this example, you're putting in your country or state, your category, your blog title, which would be kind of like your main keyword or the focus on your blog, and then your URL. And then if you want to do a reciprocal link to them, some of them make you do it, some of them don't. I would generally avoid that. If they're going to make you do that, I would go on to another blog directory. Um, but some of them just do it as an option. But at the very least, all you're putting in is where you're from, your category, your blog title, and your URL. And then some of them will even ask for your RSS feed URL, which in that case, that would actually be the RSS would be your blog domain.com forward slash feed. So it's very simple because it's usually only three or four fields that you're filling out. And once you're done, you're done. And then every time you update your blog post, it's going to be generating a lot of exposure from these other websites. Traffic method number 10. This is the final traffic method we'll cover here in part number one of this two-part traffic training course. Traffic method number 10 is all about forum marketing. It's getting traffic from forums. And that means getting involved. These are relevant forums. You want to find active forums in your niche market to be a part of. Google search things like weight loss forum or your niche forum. So things like, you know, like weight loss or golfing forum to come across them. Fitness online forum or like your niche online forum. These are examples of what you would do. Where I put your niche, that would be the market you're trying to get traffic from. They should be the highest, tra highest traffic forums in your niche market in order to get you the most results possible. Make sure they allow you to set up your link on a profile. If they don't allow you to set up your link on a profile, then more than likely it's not going to be the best use of your time because you're not going to get a huge amount of results from it. 
A big plus is if they give you a signature link to place a, a line to place a link. That would be absolutely huge because then you could link to your blog within your niche market and you can go out there in this forum and start engaging with people. You get involved by asking questions, responding to people that have questions, uh, getting involved in the discussions or the debates. You don't want to go right into a forum and just post your link out there. You absolutely do not want to do that. In fact, you very rarely, if ever, you almost never want to even include your link on there. Uh, that's really important. You do not even want to include your link in an actual forum post. You, you want to include it in a signature or on your profile if they allow it. That way people on their own time can come across it. But getting involved there is going to get you exposure. The more amounts of, of posts that you make, those are long-term links that are out there actually deliver real value to the discussions because people will notice get more views with quality content and occasionally by creating by being controversial so be controversial in that niche you might have an opinion that's stronger than everybody else that's gonna actually draw a lot of interest and get a lot of people commenting and going back and forth don't spend all your times in the forums though it's not gonna be an it's not the most effective traffic strategy but it's another way to get exposure in your niche market use your time wisely maybe maybe spend 30 minutes in there it's very easy though to get in a forum and get sucked in for two three four hours and next thing you know you haven't really accomplished anything else but maybe set a timer you know 15 minutes a day 20 minutes a day I'm gonna ask a few questions or I'm gonna comment on a few questions you do that every day you do two or three posts a day and you have a signature link on there then by the end of a month there you've got 60 posts by the end of a year you have 700 800 blog posts or excuse me forum posts that are out there with your signature link on it that's a lot of backlinks especially on a targeted traffic source and that can send you a lot of traffic so it's all about being consistent but not wasting your time in there maybe set a goal like set a four or five posts per week day take the weekend off even that's close to 100 posts per month and 1,200 by year end. And each one of those posts could have your signature link going back to your blog. And you don't want to, I wouldn't put like an affiliate link. I would send them back to your blog or even send them to your squeeze page or landing page. The more exposure you have on those forums, the better for you because you're getting a very high quality traffic, you know, high traffic from a lot of different people. There are other forums that offer a buy sell trade section so they're focused on actually buying selling and trading stuff as they say. You can Google search the phrase just like I have it here in quotes buy comma sell comma trade in quotes forums and then your niche market so like buy sell trade forums for golf buy sell trade forums for uh, website webmaster forums these are typically found with webmaster forums internet marketing forums often even have a special offer section that you could get further traffic from by posting a certain offer in that niche market you many of you have probably heard of the warrior forum and know how that goes you can post offers at the community once in these areas uh, so depending on what kind of niche you're in the webmaster forums they like to know about website traffic so if you can teach people about website traffic you could actually post in the buy sell trade section post in the classified section a lot of forums even other niches outside of online marketing and those types of markets have a classified section that you could post on this can be an excellent source of targeted traffic Here's an example when looking at other forums too. This here is a weight loss, a diet and weight loss community. Uh, what you want to look at here is the numbers. When you first go here, you want to look at what kind of comments or what kind of amounts of views these posts are getting. Here's a thread, for example, with 88,406 views. 88,406 views. That is a lot of eyeballs and a lot of targeted eyeballs, meaning they're interested in weight loss. And then you'll see just down here 10,398, 29,636. A lot of these forums tell you this kind of data. So what you want to do is look at what kind of views they're getting. Get an idea as to the types of views they are actually seeing and go from there. Here's the Warrior Forum. This again is another very popular website forum. It's got a Warrior Special Offer section where you can actually post special offers. You can see some of these special offers. This one has 32,000 views, 12,000 views. Some of these are brand new. They have about 600 views. It's another great way to get exposure, especially if you're in uh, this particular niche market. So this is the end of the first part of our traffic 
two-part traffic series. We've got 15 other traffic methods to cover on the next session, uh, but these are traffic methods 1 through 10. I encourage you to get out there, start taking action. Any kind of traffic method, it's all about having variety of traffic methods and being consistent as you go out there and get traffic.